Cool, so the latest chapter is on complex direct current circuits. Um, technically, this chapter is usually broken up into like simple DC circuits with like just combinations of resistors and series and parallel. And then we get into complex ones dealing with Kirchhoff's laws and stuff like that, but I kind of broke it up a little different. Um, but today we'll start talking about complex circuits, one involving Kirchhoff's laws. For that, we just gotta talk about sources of EMF. So first of all, what does EMF stand for? Close, electromotive force. So in this case, it's got the symbol epsilon here. So in the electron motive force, you can think of this as just like an electron pump. It is there just to pump electrons around a circuit. So going from low potential to high potential, so it increases the potential energy of your charge carriers. And again, with conventional current, we like to think of this as going from positive to negative, even though the truth is in most circuits, we're going from negative to positive with the flow of electrons. So, but we'll treat it just as conventional current here from positive to negative. So, <clears throat> What we haven't looked at before, though, is looking at these sources of EMF. It's typically either a battery or a generator or something like that. And obviously, with what we're doing now, we're talking exclusively about batteries. So with our battery, though, we've dealt with these external resistors. What we haven't looked at is the fact that the battery itself has its own resistance. We call the internal resistance of the battery. And so technically, if we kind of make this entire region the battery, the battery itself has its own internal resistor. And if we look at this here, how is this resistor related to this resistor? Series. They're in series. And so that's how it works. The internal resistance of the battery will be in series if you have a single resistor in your circuit, like we do here. And so this EMF is the EMF inside that battery, but we have something called the terminal voltage. So and you're going to have a voltage drop across that internal resistance. Any voltage or potential you have left at that point is what's called the terminal voltage of the battery. So in this case, uh, what's the terminal voltage of a typical car battery? 12. 12 volts. So it turns out the EMF is a little bit higher than that, though, because you do drop a little bit on the internal resistance. And so a typical uh, EMF in a car battery might be like 14.4 volts or something like that, and you get a little drop here. They also make it a little high anyways, because if you drop below 12 volts, it won't start your car in a lot of cases. We want to run as long as possible. Question? So terminal voltage is the, the subtraction of that resistance from that resistor? Correct. So if you take your terminal voltage delta V here, it'll be equal to the EMF of your battery, but minus the current flowing through it times the resistance of it. Where a little r here is the resistance of your internal resistance of that battery. So if you subtract off that voltage drop across that resistance, the terminal voltage is what you got left. So where was the epsilon <clears throat> on that? So the epsilon is still this guy here. Now here's the deal. I tell you all this so that you realize that there is an internal resistance and that way you're prepared to see how, you know, if it's in series or something. But most of the time, we're going to assume that this internal resistance is significantly smaller than any kind of load resistance you're going to see across that circuit. So if I look at like this resistor right here, the assumption we often make is that this resistance is much, much, much higher than any kind of internal resistance. And so most of the time we just suffice to say, ignore any kind of internal resistance at all and just you know, characterize it as negligible. So keep in mind, we do most of the circuit problems we've been doing, we just ignored that it even existed. And, and again, the truth is it's there, it's just in most cases gonna be insignificant compared to your load resistance. Cool? Cool, if we look at uh, a typical AA battery, what is the potential provided by a, a typical AA battery? Anybody know? 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts. So if I've got a device that needs more than 1.5 volts, can I use a AA battery? Ah, there you go. You have to use more than one. And so the way it works, if you have a typical battery here, so that's 1.5 volts. So, but if whatever your resistor here is, needs more current than this could supply, a greater potential to get a greater current, then what you might do is stick another one in series with it. And so now this would effectively give you three volts increase in potential. And if I need four and a half volts, I put another one in series. So, but the thing here is that source of EMF here, these batteries in this case, so are additive when in series. So put as many as you want in series and the potential just keeps growing. 